Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about uh, getting an artistic win while uh, drawing. Um, and uh, I'm going to do it while we paint a tank in this sketchbook and let's see how it goes. <laughs> So, when I talk about an artistic win, um, kind of what I'm referring to is just the feeling that I get when I make a drawing or I make something that I've created and I just feel relatively good about it. Sometimes during the grind of everyday life and needing to make pages uh, every day, uh, every work day, uh, I do five pages a week of comic pages, um, sometimes I get a little bit burnt out and I wonder you know, do I still really love this? <laughs> um, so I kind of used these uh, sketches over the weekend to recharge and uh, feel good about my drawing and just, you know, kind of relax, honestly. And one thing that I love drawing and that is easy for me is tanks. So I thought I'd experiment with painting a tank this weekend, this past weekend. So as you can see, I'm laying out a three-point perspective grid here. Um, I'm drawing a, a Sherman tank from World War II, uh, and you can see I'm mostly referencing the one vanishing point to the left of the page there, and I basically guessed the other two vanishing points. So we have a very subtle three-point perspective grid happening. Um, the second vanishing point being off the page to the right, and the third vanishing point being way below the drawing that's kind of concaving down, as you can see, which I've basically faked. Um, I was constantly referring back to reference on my iPad, which is just above the drawing. Um, and yeah, so uh, I remember it being pretty frustrated at this point. Uh, the turret was not looking right. Um, also trying to make sure that the treads were drawn correctly. There's also a million different versions of the Sherman tank uh, with a different accoutrement that can go on the front panel. So I remember trying to get consistency in my reference and having a difficult time with that. I should have spent more time trying to find the actual tank that I'd be drawing with the actual like uh, tech, but that's my own fault. Okay. Still, so I'm starting to like put in a little more detail here. I know that I need to change the um, turret, but I don't want to deal with it yet. Oh, here I go. <laughs> it's weird watching this back, you know, seeing myself kind of attack this and problem solving. Um, I'm obviously not thinking about it when I'm doing it. I'm trying to get that angle correct. And uh, I've never really tried to draw a Sherman from this angle before. It is pretty challenging. Uh, and you'll notice that I pencil really hard. This is a problem that I have that I'm trying to work on. It's just the way that I draw. It's why I keep my pencils so, I, why I use such soft pencil leads so that I, you know, I literally will tear the paper up in the process of drawing if I don't. Just establishing a little bit of background here. Not a lot, just enough to know that it's not in the middle of nowhere.
So uh, I knew something wasn't working right about this turret, but I kept drawing on it for some reason. I'm not sure why. Sometimes things need a l more detail for them to work, but that's pretty rare. I've I found that that case is quite rare. Uh, you start with shapes, and if the shape looks good, you move in with detail after, not before. So I remember being really frustrated here, and for a drawing that's supposed to be relaxing, I remember I was not having a very good time. But I was close. Uh, here I'm trying to make that turret work more. <laughs> okay, so we just skipped ahead a little bit, and I erased part of the turret. I'm trying to draw it over again, different angle. It looks better. But nope, yep. Good job, me. <laughs> This is where I remember really getting excited, um, feeling like this could be something really cool, was after I redrew that turret again. Alright, so we're moving on to uh, paints, and uh, I'm using acrylic gouache here. So it basically acts the exact same as gouache, except that it has uh, an acrylic binder in it. So it once it dries, it's not going to move. Uh, in regular gouache, you have uh, basically no kind of binder, so as soon as you put water on dry gouache, it will reactivate and kind of, unless you're doing it right, muddy up because you're going to be mixing color on top of color and it's always moving. So as I was working more and more with gouache, this was frustrating me more and more and I could appreciate the aspects of working with traditional gouache, but I really wanted to be able to move on layer by layer and feel like I was moving, always moving forward. And also working in comics where I'm working with ink that is just so permanent, you know, I just feel like I'm a little more ready to accept the permanence of acrylic, and I, it works a lot better for me, honestly, so that's why I was using this here. Um, to the left, I have a little makeshift palette. Uh, pro tip, if you'd like to keep your acrylics or your gouache drier for longer, if you take just a little pan, any sort of metal pan, and you take some paper towel and you wet the paper towel, not so that it's dripping, but that it's so it's nice and wet. And you take some parchment paper and put it over the um, paper towel and you wet the parchment paper a little bit as well. It will keep your acrylic paints and your gouache acrylic wet for much longer than if you just put it onto a dry surface. It's a really easy hack. I made the mistake of trying to buy like a stay wet palette, but that's kind of silly when it's so easy to just make your own. Um, so here I'm just laying down some base colors. Um, sorry for the bit of the reflection. I was not really paying attention to that. Uh, you can see that I am not being careful with my strokes at all, which is a nice change. Uh, from my kind of obsessive inking and just trying to lay things down nice and easy and trying to have a good time while I do it. And one nice thing about acrylic gouache is it really does act like watercolor when it's wet. Um, it works great with water. And here now we've, we've moved ahead a little bit. I've now started to put 
some thicker coats on top as the first layer has dried. Um, this is a really, I remember having a really good time with this because it's so different than how I usually paint, or I usually create lines. This isn't so much line creation, it's like putting down blocks, which is so different and very alien to me, but I knew that I wanted to try something different, which, to kind of like remove myself from line art. Uh, it's a challenge, but, you know, it keeps the, uh, keeps art making fresh for me. Bringing a little bit more color into the sky there. A little more definition to the side of the tank, trying to get the silhouette correct. So one thing I was trying to really avoid was to use any sort of black in this uh, painting. Um, I'm really trying to learn how to use different colors to make uh, different shades rather than to rely on black as a way to kind of just escape uh, having to deal with tones traditionally, which is just with a brush with black ink on it. Starting to bring a little more background in here.
So it was at this time which I took a picture, and uh, you know I highly recommend this for uh, anybody who might you know consider painting. Um, is to take a picture with your phone, and then you can go and you can edit that picture, and give yourself a look at what the your painting looks like in grayscale. I do this a lot when I'm about midway through a painting. Uh, or any sort form of art that's not line art, so I can see how my contrast is looking. A lot of times when I paint, especially because I'm not very good at it and I'm not very experienced, I'm making lines and I'm making color choices without considering necessarily the ton tonality of those color choices. So it might look cool color-wise, but as far as contrast goes and where the eye is leading, uh, where the eye wants to go in a painting is obviously where the contrast is. And on the left side of the tank, I was seeing that there just wasn't quite enough contrast in relation to the rest of the picture. We really needed to have some stark black difference between the uh, tank and the background. So I remember specifically taking a photo, making it grayscale and just seeing where I needed to add a little bit more oomph. And not with black, but with a dark color like uh, Prussian blue mixed with uh, burnt umber. That's a great way to get a nice dark line. Uh, or ultramarine blue, you know, any, any intense blue mixed with a darker brown is going to help get you a vibrant looking kind of dark color. I definitely I'm stealing that advice from James Gurney, who is one of my favorite illustrators, and I've learned a lot of gouache techniques from watching his YouTube channel, which I will link below. All right, so we're speeding up a little bit here, uh, just so this video doesn't take too long. <laughs> this whole process maybe took me about an hour 45. Um, so as you can see, I, I am working with a fairly limited palette too. Um, and I really try and leave the highlights till the end. And things are getting a little more detailed here. Um, just adding a little bit more white and just a few more highlights I remember getting really excited this part of the process this detail a little bit when you know you have a solid foundation feels really good well, things are coming together slowly so adding a few more highlights Trying to color match as best I can. Now one thing about uh, working with the ruler and painting, I will lay the ruler down and then I will lift it up so it's sitting at about a 45 degree angle and I will put my finger on the edge, my middle finger, and rest my middle finger on the edge while I drag it across, I drag the uh, brush across the uh, ruler and you know, you're never really going to get as steady a line as if 
you had a micron with a ruler, but it's close enough, and if you practice a little bit, it gets pretty easy, pretty darn fast. I really didn't like how I illustrated that middle part of the Sherman, so I just went over it. <laughs> uh, one nice thing about acrylic wash is it is really opaque, so going over and fixing mistakes is very easy. It's really refreshing to be able to work in a medium where I don't need to use whiteout, I can just build on top. It's exciting, and it uh, feels good. Now we're going to work on the background a little bit and just make it look a little more intentional. One thing I like to do if something's looking a little too sharp on a drawing or a painting is I like to kind of wet it out with my fingers. And I do this a lot with my whiteout on my, in my comics. I'll just tap my finger over the lines I've just made, and it kind of has this tendency to just lessen the uh, intensity of the line I just put down. Just bringing out some more detail of these soldiers sitting by and adding a little more detail on the ground. Doesn't take much. <clears throat> Doing a final pass with the ruler. Um, I know I've talked a little bit on the channel before about like important lines. Um, you know, you don't want things to look too straight because then it will look like it's been done on a computer or uh, a little cold. So the idea is to identify which lines need you need to really sell that need to be really straight and use a ruler for those lines and then build around those with uh, strokes by hand and kind of bring the best of both worlds with lines that both look very intentional and very thought out and very straight and lines that look organic and dynamic. Just a little more dimension to the ground plane here. Uh, 
again my my finger mixing I do this a fair amount And this um, is kind of the section where I'm just adding really little tiny details to help sell the realism. Something that I do a lot in my comics as well is I try and find really specific things that will make objects just feel a little more real and thought out. So little things like the USA or the kill all Nazis on the bottom of the tank just kind of helps bring it to life a little bit more. So that's that. Um, I really enjoyed this process. It was really tough um, at times, but I did push through and um, I made a few changes, just a few changes uh, post filming. I think it came out pretty good. I'm really happy with it. It was really relaxing. And honestly, in times like these, I'll take all the relax relaxation I can get. Uh, I encourage you to do the same. Pick something that you uh, know that you're gonna enjoy drawing staying in your comfort zone and that's totally okay to do and it will feel good i promise and i will see you next time